people tend to migrate in. Well, so we start on time and end on time. Hi, Lindsay. Welcome. All right. So let me do a a, a little agenda stroll here. Let me switch into presentation mode. So this agenda is revised just a little bit. Uh, Richard, can you see this uh, document? Can you see the uh, agenda? Yes. Okay. All right. So we'll do a little check-in. <laughs> we're going to skip this crosswalk and we're going to move it till the 26th uh, because you really haven't had an, uh, an opportunity to look at the full survey. Tonight, hopefully, we'll finalize a draft vision, a draft mission, and maybe come close to uh, finalizing or at least moving closer to having belief value statements. Uh, we'll do a little bit of work on the goal matrix. I had a good meeting today with, uh, with Lane. Uh, Lane is probably not gonna join us for this meeting. And I'll explain more about that. And then towards the end of the meeting, uh, we'll finalize materials for the school board meeting starting at 6.30. I don't know how quickly we'll be uh, called on in the board agenda, uh, but that's the that's the plan for tonight. So let's switch. Well, actually, let me go back to any questions or thoughts or issues that you might have. Hi, James. Any uh, any concerns, thoughts, issues, feedback before we jump into the agenda tonight? Okay. Let me go back then and we'll take a look. Uh, in the meantime, I was able to find Gifford Medical Center's vision, uh, and I'm quite sure it's caring for you for life. So again, that follows kind of the regimen of being uh, short, succinct, and to the point. Uh, what we're looking at here is we have three potential vision statements. Uh, also, looking through some some old files, the Agency of Ed has encouraged the uh, Orange Southwest uh, School District to create a, a separate vision statement. So we're right on track. There was a question early on if we we're gonna merge the mission and vision together or keep them separate. I think we're, we're moving in the right direction. Um, this I believe was, was David's suggestion uh, to become a top performing school district in our region with educational excellence that inspires intellectual curiosity, creativity, and achievement so that all students reach their full potential. Um, another one that we were looking at is cultivating excellence and preparing students for the future. And I think the one we might have been leaning towards last time is a path for all to learn, think, grow, and achieve. Maybe that was maybe that was Richards. So what are your what are your thoughts here? on uh, possible vision statements. Uh, we can do some wordsmithing or we can be leaning towards a particular one. And again, I can't see you. So maybe uh, Lisa, you can be my eyes here as far as calling on folks. Sure, I'm happy to do that. Um, so if people, um, want to weigh in um, with just this many people in the grid and the document, it's hard for me to see everybody. Um, so you can unmute. Um, or are we just doing a straight up thumb vote at this point? Well, I we can have a conversation and then do a thumb vote. So I don't know okay. if you want to do some editing first or if someone has another vision for us to consider. Yep. So does anyone have feedback on these three statements? Any wordsmithing you might want to do or thoughts about how we might shift the language in one? I was just gonna kind of give some support for the third one um, that I think it actually been kind of a combination of three or four that we had come up with the last time and we were talking about how it was kind of short and sweet and the mission can kind of get a little bit more wordy um so i think that was kind of a nice collection of everybody's thoughts from last time okay, thank you that was lindsay 
Winton. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Lindsay. So were we kind of leaning towards this? Yeah, yeah, I thought that was the one we had chosen last time. Like kind of all, I thought we did a thumb vote vote on that one. Um, maybe that maybe we did. Been. Well, let's take let's take one more and uh, and see if we still feel the same. And again, this will go forward as a draft to the board. It'll go as a draft to the administrative team. Uh, they may choose to have some feedback about it, but at least for tonight, this will be our best best thinking. Um, <laughs> Other thoughts or issues before Lisa takes that vote? All right, Lisa, take it away. All right, I I can't actually um, see everyone in the grid right now. Um, so it's really challenging. I wonder if for the vote, um, if you could stop sharing your screen. I don't know, Winton, I'm just seeing eight people right now okay maybe i to adjust something on mine um yeah it's tiled we we do have some visitors tonight happy to have you folks if you could turn off your video so that we can uh, do our vote with only design team members that would be greatly appreciated mm -hmm. yeah and i'm i'm still seeing only eight people we could vote in the chat or like put a yes or a no or something like that. That works too. Perfect. Okay, so see 12 people too, if that would be helpful. I'm not sure how many we have for the design team meeting, but I think I can see everybody. Oh, okay. If you can see everyone, I've been messing. I have 11 of us, 12. Now I can see James too. So. Beautiful. All right. All right. So if you want to count them up, Lindsay, um, because I'm still, regardless of what I do, only seeing eight. Happy um, to. Okay, great. So anyone who would like um, for our draft OSSD vision statement to be, the vision of OSSD schools is to become a top performing district in our region with educational excellence that inspires intellectual curiosity, creativity, and achievement so that all students reach their full potential. Please use your thumb to vote. I'm seeing two. Okay. All right. Um, next, anyone who would like to vote for cultivating excellence and preparing students for the future, um, please vote by raising your thumb. Don't believe I'm seeing any. Okay. Um, and then finally, anyone who would like to um, vote for a path for all to learn, think, grow, and achieve. Please vote by raising your thumb. I'm getting 10. Okay, the math works out. All right, we got it. Congratulations. Thank you. Let's move on to mission statement. And remember the, the vision was the aspirations for the future, the mission is what we do, the core of the business, and from it come the objectives, and finally what it takes to reach those objectives. It also shapes the organization's culture. And remember, these are our four theme areas for the plan. This is the, this is the current mission statement, and Anne uh, shared with us last time that this, this piece, even though it might look a little clunky, is actually a key component of the policy governance focus that the board operates under. So the current mission is students have the knowledge, skills, and tools to be prepared for the next stage of their lives, which justify the resources invested by the community. I shared with you that this is the Randolph Tech Center mission, and the samples we were looking at uh, last time, we had a couple of them. Uh, students are deeply invested in learning and skillful educators help them develop their unique talents and passions to become successful adults and citizens. Or the district is a community that empowers students of all backgrounds to discover and pursue their unique passions, build diverse relationships and develop their skills for meaningful futures. 
So we're really considering three. And I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna move the text center one to a different spot. So you can kind of see them all together. No, maybe you can't, let me just do this. Now maybe we can see them. Oh no, I'm still not on the same page. Hold on. All right, so, no, well, it keeps going to different pages. So this is the current one. Uh, this is the first sample and this is the second sample. What, uh, what kind of conversations would you like to have tonight? Advocacy for a particular one or against the particular one? What are you thinking? Winton, I like the current one, but, but I like how um, sample one has become successful adults and citizens maybe instead of just going to the next stage of their lives, but that's just my two cents. Oh, oh, okay. Um, Say that again, David. I was I'm looking at two different things here. So you want so me to pull I, something out of sample one? I I like most of the uh, the current mission statement, except when it says to go next stage of their lives. What what I like better instead of that is how sample one says become successful adults and citizens. I feel like getting the word citizens in there gets towards one of the themes of, um, you know, just teaching them around democracy and the process. And, contributing to their community and okay how do other folks feel about that we had talked last time about how we didn't love the ending of this current one so i yeah. wonder if that can kind of go if we had the part that david just added in I like, for example, too, how it talks about students of all backgrounds, since we're just working so hard on our equity work. So I wonder if, like, that can just be kind of how the first one starts, that students of all backgrounds have the knowledge, skills, and tools. I like that, too. Yeah, then I would, I would honestly just delete the, which justifies the resources invested by the community, personally. I just, I feel like that part's a little odd to me, but. Okay. I like in sample too the diverse relationships, or not necessarily even diverse, but just the idea of relationships. And you know, we've that again, that's sort of a theme we're talking a lot about is their ability to build healthy relationships, communicate well, all those things. So I, I'm not 100 percent sure how I would word it into that yet, but I'm just wondering if we can create maybe some verbiage around that. Okay. I, I know that Anne try, tried to explain last time why we have to have that, which justify the resources invested by the community. But RTCC uh, doesn't reference the amount of money the community is spending I, and, and their policy governance also. So oh. I, it, 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 I, either we don't, either one of them's wrong or um, it, it was just an idea that had its time that no longer does. Well, the worst that can happen is the board will say we want it back in and they have the ultimate power here. All right. Well, let's see if we can craft this so it reads well uh, with the additions and deletions. Uh, students of all backgrounds will build diverse relationships and have the knowledge, skills, and tools to become successful adults and citizens. Hmm. There's a nice little ring to it, doesn't it? What if we took sample number two, I really like that one, the more I look at it, and add um, to the end, build diverse relationships and develop their skills for meaningful futures as successful adults and citizens. All right, where do you want me to copy, right from here? Yeah, I think if you just remove the period and then put as successful adults and citizens, that would complete that. And then I would just wonder about putting something 
that speaks more deeply to academics in that statement? I don't know. All right, Lisa, are you saying pull something out of two and put it up here? No, I'm saying add something to the end of two. Oh, I got it. Okay. So put that last um, section. So as successful adults and citizens right there on the end. No, I would take out the and become and just put the word as. Oh, I got it. I see what you're saying now. And then uh, I think that one would need something that speaks more deeply to academics. Number two does. Yes. Okay. All right. What are some other thoughts that people have? I actually like that as Lisa has amended it with no further amendments. I think it actually contains that spirit within it already. Uh, developing skills, I think, covers that. Um, the fact that we're talking about them being students and empowering them as students, I, I personally, I think that's uh, fine as it is. Number two. <clears throat> as it looks now, yeah. Okay. All right. If you look. Sorry, I also like how that one starts with the OSD as a community, as opposed to just making a statement about students. Yep. Okay. I was just going to say, if you look at the current strategic plan themes that come up, foundational knowledge is um, one that uh, ties in with the academics, and then there's also personal development skills that I feel like isn't really in that mission statement that maybe could be added somehow. Okay, you got some ideas? Why don't I do this? Why don't I just bring these down so we have them directly beside the mission statement that we're crafting? Okay. Looking for looking for suggestions here. I don't know if this will make things too wordy, but I wonder can we just add in like and develop their knowledge, tools, and skills for meaningful futures as successful adults and citizens? Mm hmm. Hmm. How do, what do folks feel about that? The only thing I don't like about this is that discover and pursue their unique passions. I just think that's a little bit of a distraction. It, it certainly sounds nice, but I guess I don't see that as a primary rule of the school to tell my kids what, you know, how to find their passions. I don't know. It just feels a little bit out there. I'd rather see foundational knowledge, personal development of skills. I like I like I like that hard, more concrete skill set, tools and knowledge that language personally. OK. I will say that uh, we heard quite a bit in the forums about students being self-directed learners and also uh, more exposure to career uh, opportunities and uh, individual passions. So I, I did hear that a fair amount. Again, totally up to the design team as to how we want to handle it or not. What if we replace the word passion with purpose? Hmm. All right. Purpose or career pathway, I think something like that would align better with what we've been hearing. Okay. Yeah, I, I feel like purpose, I don't know, flows better. Um, just because their pathways can be so different. It can be immediately a career pathway or it can lead to seven years of college. Um, Are you saying take out career or leave it in? I, I'm leaning stylistically toward that, but I've got an English teacher brain, so. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, I agree with that. I think, you know, to assume again that like a freshman's already on a career path or that, you know, especially if this is potentially pertaining even to middle school, I don't know, career seems a little maybe early, but I like the purpose idea as well. I think that works. Can I speak up briefly in defense of the word passion? Um, just in that I feel like now as we have it with purpose instead of passion, it kind of feels like we are just directing them outwardly and we're not leaving any room for the student or the person as they are to have any say in their own future um and passion can mean many things it doesn't necessarily have to mean something that's a hobby it can actually mean a career or um a, this i don't know the unique purpose makes it sound like we're creating cogs in a machine rather than helping craft healthy functional adults so uh, i i actually really liked passion and i don't think it's too out there myself Okay, other thoughts? I think, that, I think that's actually addressed with the meaningful futures one. Um, things being meaningful is very important and people being passionate is very important. Um, but I also think no one has anything unless they have purpose. And it's, sometimes it's very hard for kids to figure out their purpose. Hmm. Okay. I, I, I love the dialogue, it's, it's, it's great. Um, other thoughts, either in support of what we have or alternate thinking? A unique life course, unique, we talked about pathway. What are some other options? If See if we can come to some consensus here. So this is just a draft that we're moving forward, correct? Yeah. I feel like this is a pretty good draft. I don't know what other people are thinking. Can I make one quick suggestion just to, to try to get passion back in there for Richard? Um, could we put passion right before the word meaningful futures to try to connect the two in some way? I guess I just didn't want to see too much fo focus on passions of of hobbies, like he said, I totally agree. Passion is important. It's important if you can tie it to a meaningful future. And um, I don't know if that's the right spot for it, but okay. Um, how about how about further up, Winton, and pursue their unique passions for meaningful futures? Uh, I don't know. I'm wordsmithing, so just an idea. So uh, I'm not seeing where you where you're suggesting here. How about Develop unique their... purpose and passions towards the meaningful futures? What if we do you put unique passions back where it was, and then develop their knowledge, tools, and skills for purposeful futures as successful adults? Okay. Yeah. So for purposeful futures. Okay, what do, what do people think about that? Passion needs an S on the end and we need four before purposeful. All right, any consensus here? Haley, you're muted if you're talking to us. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm just trying to read. <laughs> I have to read it aloud. <laughs> okay. Are we at a point where we're ready to vote? Did we accomplish uh, either directly or indirectly embedding our our uh, themes within this bit uh within this mission um so I, I i know that that knowledge tools and skills um has been around for a while but i've always wondered what tools and skills it is that we are developing in our students um that that are so necessary for their um um their life that 
I, I'm, I'm just wondering if, if those are the right words, if they even need to be there. It seems like we're sending them all to trade school. I, I, just my feeling. I can't answer that before this process, but as part of the process we've been going through, I was thinking of skills as the life skills that we've been talking about, but, but I hear what you're saying about it could be viewed that, that way. Well, and we heard a lot about socio-emotional skills. We heard about executive functioning skills. So I think that skills could encompass lots of different domains. And I would, I would I mention strategies that all fits in with that to mm -hmm. me, not just a mm -hmm. you know. When I again. read that, I, okay, go ahead, Gus, if you would repeat that, I think. Well, I, I heard you. That, um, communication skills, tools, strategies, all of those knowledge tools and skills to me represents a huge range of things not just you know the nuts and bolts of jobs mm -hmm. yeah when i read that section i think about transferable skills and our habits of work heart and mind um, which are communication skills and time management skills and having tools to cope with challenging situations so i think of it beyond um the really specific um purpose that you mentioned david so i hear that um and i see how it could be perceived that way and maybe i've been too immersed in education to see beyond that um but that's what i i think of is like the transferable skills so so i was thinking of it too narrowly but then when i think of it when you define it that way then tools and skills become redundant i think it should be knowledge and skills uh, unless someone can say how tools and skills sell differently in this scenario of everything we've been doing, they feel like they're all all those things are being lumped into one thing, and why not pick one? Yeah, I'm happy with cutting tools. Me too. Yep. Good, good, good idea. I don't know if this is again getting too picky, but I'm wondering if part of what we're looking at is the, I like how in the very first one we were working on the knowledge kind of came before the build diverse relationships. So I'm almost wondering if like backgrounds to discover and pursue their unique passions for knowledge and build, I don't know if we even need skills, I guess, and build diverse relationships for futures as successful adults and citizens. But I just don't know about if maybe moving knowledge kind of up there makes sense, but maybe that's getting too picky. What do you think, folks? I had the same thought earlier. I thought the knowledge thing should come first, but I didn't know how to word that. I don't want to lose skills, though. I, I like I like having that in there because of all the thoughts around life skills and yeah. communication skills. Could you do build skills and diverse relationships? Yeah, for I would... futures as successful adults and citizens. I wondered if it was like a comma after passions. So unique passions, knowledge, skills, build diverse relationships and, okay. So you're saying pull, pulling it out of here, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, something around there, but might need to play with the wording. The one, the one thing that I wonder about moving that knowledge up to passions is, um, is there some knowledge like a, a foundational knowledge that we want students to have? Because right now it's unique passions for knowledge, but does that really, we want to be able to measure in the end. So what knowledge, you know, is what is the content of that knowledge or is it just whatever they happen to be passionate for I, do you follow what i'm saying yeah i feel like by moving that those uh, words for knowledge after the word passions we've now kind of totally changed what that means um so now we're saying you students have to be passionate about knowing things we're not we're not celebrating your what you're uniquely interested in, whether that is a pursuit of knowledge or a pursuit of a skill or a pursuit of something else entirely. Um, so, yeah, I, I feel like what we just did right up until the point where we just took out tools, I feel like we've now totally changed the message of the whole thing. Um, just my, my tuppenny's worth. 
No, and I sort of agree. And I was Linda saying it. That's not kind of the way I was wording it because you're right. I don't want to attach those two. I was just looking at like more having it up where it was sort of read as part of a, a key component. But I I agree with you. I don't think making them the same is that wasn't what I was looking at. And maybe leaving it where it was was totally fine. <laughs> All right, what did we miss here? Maybe comma after passions, so it's its own thing. Yeah. Maybe start with that. We need a bridge statement, and I don't think this is the right one. I wonder if you just hit undo at the top and just bring it back to where it was before we. Yeah, because diverse relationships is clunky down there at the bottom. Yeah, um, I agree. Put it back. Keep going. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's good. I I think it was good to play with it because I was wondering about that myself. Okay. I agree. I see what you're trying to do. Put knowledge as a as a more important thing, but how to get that in in that way is that's that's difficult. Yes. Okay. How are folks feeling now? Is it getting a? Are we getting centered in this one? I see a lot of head nods. All right. Yeah. Lisa, you want to you want to activate the uh, the voting process? Sure. And Lindsay, will you please count again? Yes. And, Thank and you. So we're, you're going to vote on three options, three. But, but you only get one one vote. Yep. And okay. Anne, I can't see your screen, so I don't know if you want to turn your camera on if you're there, so I can see your vote. Um, so the first vote, um, please raise your thumb if you would um, like to support maintaining the current OSSD mission statement. I am not seeing any. Okay. Um, sample number one, the OSSD students are deeply invested in learning and skillful educators help them develop their unique talents and passions to become successful adults and citizens. Please raise your thumb if you vote for sample number one. I'm also not seeing any. All right, sample number two, the OSSD is a community that empowers students of all backgrounds to discover and pursue their unique passions, build diverse relationships and develop their knowledge and skills for purposeful futures as successful adults and citizens. That looks like everybody. Is that 11? Uh, 13, 13, I think. Yep, oh, we, got 13. Yeah. we have a unanimous vote. Excellent, excellent, excellent. That's a pretty good mission statement, folks. It's good work. All right. Let's see how successful we are with belief statements. Um, and I, I also remember a couple of meetings ago, I posed whether or not we should do belief statements. As I looked at this agency of ed, uh, report. It's uh, called the Continuous Improvement uh, uh, Report that the agency did on behalf of Orange Southwest. Not only did they say do a, a vision, but they also said uh, also said to do values or belief statements. So we were on we were on the right track. So we have a lot of them here. I didn't do much wordsmithing, I don't think, after our meeting. Uh, we're looking at three, six, nine, 12, 13. Uh, nine or 10 would be pretty good. And we've had uh, two or three different equity ones. So I think probably makes sense. Let's just work through so that we can see them all. And then we'll do some wordsmithing and see if we can uh, reduce a few to maybe the nine or 10 range. So the first one, all students are continually challenged academically and encouraged to reach the next level of proficiency. 
the second one, equity means that every student has different needs and their needs should be met no matter where they're from or which school they attend. And I remember last time we talked about ensure a culture of inclusion. So if we come back and wordsmith this or, or a different one, we'll make sure that, we, uh, that we're doing that. I'm gonna switch these to numbers so that we, well, let's just go. Well, I guess we'll do letters. Uh, see, all children have access to the education resources and rigor they need regardless of race, gender, ethnicity, language, disability, all of the, uh, those components and or family income. D is students are immersed in school culture that is respectful and supports diverse opinions. Equity is the degree of achievement, fairness, and opportunity in education as measured by a standard of success. Students and staff are invaluable to the community. All students and staff deserve a learning environment that fosters physical and emotional health. Environmental stewardship is a responsibility for all. The delivery of education resources should be student focused to maintain a culture where every student can achieve. Students are most successful when there is mutual respect and active collaboration between students, teachers, parents, and the community. Educators and parents together inspire students to confidently advocate for and design growth experiences that help them define who they are and where they're headed as adults. Students should learn transferable skills that enable them to become creative and resilient thinkers, to sustain their own sense of purpose and life path, and to balance academic and social emotional growth. Didn't we take out should in all of these? I think we should if we haven't. <laughs> Say that again, Lisa. I think we should if we haven't. Okay. I think it's much cleaner if it says students learn transferable skills. It yeah. just seems much more focused. Yeah, as a as a value. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it looks more like a goal. Uh, on this one, Winton, where it says resilient thinkers, it makes me think of growth mindset too, and uh -huh. connecting up quite a bit. If we could work that particular term in, it seems popular with some teachers, I think. Yeah, and there's quite a bit of research around it. Um, where are you thinking that would go here? Yeah, I think so. Okay. And then the last one, all, all staff deserve deep investments in training, professional development, and support. Is there a place in one of these we can add the um, career pathway feedback that we got during the process? Oh, uh, yeah. Good point. Or maybe not career pathway, but personal, I forget what it was called, personal For learning Personal plans. learning plans or career exposure. That might fit in K right there. Okay. Oh, here's growth experiences. All right. What do you think? Uh, let's see. I wonder if after growth in experiences if we're going to use the personal learning plan language that we would say educators and parents um, together inspire students to confidently advocate for and design growth experiences and personal learning plans that help them define who they are and where they are headed as adults okay other support for that? Okay. Well, we might have, we can just as well work backwards. Uh, with the intent of, we, we want to take out 
any redundancy and it would be good to have three or four less. Should, should we maybe put the equity ones all next to each other so we can see them maybe okay. and combine those? Yeah. So this is one equity. I feel like they were all equity really up to E, right? I mean, in different ways. Yeah. Whoops. Yeah, because we really only need one equity one, I would think. I really like D because I feel like it spells it all out really succinctly. D like dog or B like boy? D is in David or dog. Okay. Yeah. Um, All right. So Lisa has expressed uh, preference for D over B and C. What do other people think? I, I agree. I like D better than B or C. I think B and C can be deleted, but I agree also. All right, Lisa, you want to take a thumb vote here? Okay. We're looking, so. we're looking at these three with a, a preference leaning towards D, like David. Mm -hmm. I I wonder if we can do uh, if our vote can be on what David White just suggested, which is um, please raise your thumb if you're in favor of deleting. Letters B as in boy and C as in cat. I think we have everybody. Yeah, so we're all in favor of doing that. Thank you. Yeah, good. Good decision making. All right. Well, let's uh, let's work down uh, with the intent to delete maybe one or two others that might be similar we're also needing to in insert inclusion unless we feel like is inclusion in this one maybe it is i feel like it is in that one yeah mm -hmm. i also feel like c is a little redundant at this point in time okay did we have a different one that spoke to the similar school culture and respect. I think if you were to keep E or well, we you got, know grow on that, that kind of talks about respect. And we've got mutual respect in H as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're looking to possibly eliminate C. Just take a thumb vote, Lisa. Okay, all in favor of eliminating C? Lindsay's counting. Okay. I think I have seven, eight, nine, sorry. People are putting it back up, nine total. Thank you. Okay, we got it, thank you. All right. All right. Well, we might be in pretty good shape here. Let's let's work through each of them then and finalize our list of values or we'll call them beliefs. Uh, under A, all students are continually challenged academically and encouraged to reach the next level of proficiency. This one seems to speak to the proficiency-based learning as well as academic challenge. Are you feeling like that one stands by itself and needs no initial work? All right, if so, give it a, give it a thumbs up to Lisa. We'll move on to the next. All right, I think all the thumbs that I can see were up. Um, I don't know if we have 
have a yeah, sorry, extra. I think we had everybody but two, so it would be um, 11. Thank okay. you. All right. We already chose B. Yeah. Let's, uh, before we go any further, are we thinking that a majority vote moves it, or are we thinking a uh, supermajority and uh, two thirds vote? And if so, and we think we have uh, eight votes will move us, nine votes will move us. I think a majority moves us unless there's a strong uh, counter argument from someone who does not wish who has a better idea. Okay. All right. Let's go to C. Students and staff are invaluable to the community. I might be oversimplifying, um, but I think that D covers that. I think that if you're treated as an invaluable resource, then you're working in an environment that fosters physical and emotional health. But I I can sometimes be a little too quick to delete things that I think are redundant. All right. They could so easily open be combined to, to say that What's again. That? I was gonna say they could easily be combined, I think, if if people felt strongly about C. I think you could put the word invaluable into D pretty easily if you wanted. I, I have a problem with the word deserve. It'll come up again later. Um, I, I think that deserve requires so, an, an action something that the actor has done to get this thing. I, I think that if that they require it or need it, but I don't necessarily think they deserve it just because they're alive. How about that? Replacing it with experience. Thoughts, response, feedback. Just feels like maybe we need to word it. If this is a belief statement, maybe we believe it is important that all students and staff experience a learning environment. I don't know. Feels a little weird. Yeah, I like that. I like saying it's important that all. Then, but then we have to say that in front of all of them. Oh, true. They're all belief statements. That they, I, I think that that's assumed. Most okay. of all them are belief statements. Okay. Just a thought here, maybe I'm overthinking this, but um, we're talking about students and staff, and of course, I'm never going to suggest that we as staff are not learning as well. Um, but how about a learning and working environment? Because after all, it is our working environment. In other words, you're carrying forward the students and staff to learning and working. Okay. Feedback, thoughts, issues. Are we ready to vote? I, it doesn't read right. Um, are invaluable and experience a learning and working environment? I mean, it's like it needs something like and should experience or I mean, you could say like has access to or something because experience yeah. just sounds kind of awkward. Yeah. Like it. Okay. Ready to vote now. It should be have access. Okay, yep. All right, so everyone who supports D um, and the deletion of C 
and it, so we're, we'll delete C and accept D as our single statement. Please raise your thumb. Eleven. Okay. Perfect. Good work. All right. Next one, the new D, environmental stewardship is a responsibility for all. Any any discussion of that one before we vote? It's the only one that specifically addresses um, the environment. I I'd like it. I think it could be lower on the list if these are in priority, but I'm not sure we're really ordering them in any way. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So are we voting to keep this or just moving forward? Okay. Uh, let's let's continue with the votes because I think it's right. important. Yep, we'll vote. If you want to keep environmental stewardship as a responsibility for all, please raise your thumb. We have thirteen. Perfect. Oh, good. Uh, the new E delivery of education resources should be student focused to maintain a culture where every student can achieve. How is that different than B? Yeah, that's what. Uh huh. Or A for that matter. Okay. Well, of the three, do you want me to move this up near A so you can compare, or you just like this one the least and we'll vote to delete it? Yeah, I would move to delete it. All right. Other thoughts? It's also covered by G. Okay. Yeah. All right, Lisa, take it away. All right. Um, if you would like or are in favor of omitting um, E, the delivery of education resources should be student focused to maintain a culture where every student can succeed. Please raise your thumb. Sorry, 13. Okay. okay. All right. Students are most successful when there is mutual respect and active collaboration between students, teachers, parents, and the community. I feel like it's it's redundant with F, and I like F better. I don't know what other people think. I like um, E because it's so sort of multi-directional because the F kind of suggests that only the educators and the parents inspire the students when I would argue that the students often inspire each other and inspire us and it's very much more uh, complex than the start of F suggests. Yep, I yeah. see that as you're saying. Yeah. yeah, I'm hoping E speaks more to a student reading this yep. and I'm hoping F speaks more to a parent because I think sometimes we need more parents uh, engagement so I, I like I'm okay keeping both I'm, I, I like F so much I think it should be the first one <laughs> okay. my, my comment on F though would just to be I mean well while I agree that you know it's really a community I, I think that we need to be careful with the word parents um, because we have many students in our community who don't have parents or who are living with their guardians or who and I know that it's a general term but I, I that's why I prefer E um, because it just seems more focused again, as as someone said, on like the whole person rather than, um, and so maybe some com combination of E and F, of like because F has the the where they're heading sort of piece. Um, but I, I would say that I would prefer E than F. That's my so E has so. parents too. So could is there a term like families? Is that better? Yeah. Caregivers, families. Caregivers. Yeah. Replace families here with parents. Parents with families. Yep. Families is how we address uh, letters home from the elementary school for exactly that reason. Yep. We did it too. Yep. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to advocate for keeping F because it, it it embeds the personal learning plans and it also has the the, the growth experiences. So there's a couple of things that work pretty well together. What about this parent? Should this be families? Yes. Yep. I would uh, advocate for a small um, 
re-evaluation of other things that we're putting out and maybe now that that's been brought up we should we should see where else we have put parents and whether it should be replaced with families and other documents and other places okay yep agreed i can do a find and replace later on with that okay so it sounds like we're keeping e and f yep based on the head nods i'd say so all right is that a, is that an adequate vote <laughs> we can vote so we're keeping both e and f please raise your thumb yep we have all 13. okay and we've got two to go students learn transferable skills and a growth mindset that enables them to become creative and resilient thinkers to sustain their own sense of purpose and life path and to balance academic and social emotional growth Any I, like that. I think it fits really well with our mission statement. Yeah. Right? Um, a question for you. We say growth mindset here and growth experiences here. Is that okay? I think so, especially if we move F right to the top. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well. All right. I think so I would say that those are uh, growth experience and the growth mindset are two different things. Yes. Um, I also wonder, a learn transferable skills and a growth mindset. I feel like you can't really learn a growth mindset so much as develop one. All right. So you want to replace learn with develop? Uh, no, I, I think learn transferable skills and develop a growth mindset. Right. So remove that A and put the word develop. Maybe we all like it there explicitly, but I would argue that um, that growth mindset is one of the transferable skills that they have learned that they should learn. Oh, okay. I, I think it's, I just think it's included. It, it's, yeah. So what you're saying is take this right out? Well, I am, but I, other people might object and that's okay. So is, are, are these, so the goals link up to these values, right? I'm just thinking right. our current habits, which are transferable skills, don't assess a growth mindset per se. I okay. mean, I think we see that. Um, and it, yeah, so we might need to do some work on that, but. Well, I like what David said here about you learn skills, but you develop the mindset. And Richard's uh, point that these two growth, they're different kinds of context here. I would argue that developing a growth mindset enables you to learn transferable skills more readily. It's a more all-encompassing thing. It's not really something that you would assess or measure, but something you would kind of constantly be on the lookout for i mean we've all seen those kids who we know have who have not developed it and we see what happens when they face something challenging it's just it's all pervasive all day mm -hmm. are you are you uh, implying to reverse the um, put the growth mindset first then learn transferable skills second no, I'm I'm happy with it as it is. I just think there is a purpose to separating out growth mindset as a thing yeah. because it is it it just permeates everything. Okay. Well, are are you all feeling okay with how this one's worded? G. All right, Lisa. Are we ready to vote on G? Um, all in favor of keeping G as it's currently written, please raise your thumb. Thirteen. Perfect. Thank you. Got it. And the last one. All staff deserve deep investments in training, professional development, and support. Um, so this is the other deserve. I would argue that it should read something like students require staff that have access to training professional okay. and development support. Yeah. 
Is that what you're thinking, David? Yes. Have access to, access. right? I was going to say, yeah, access to, and not, um, not lose the deep investments if we do that. But that could go either way. Yep, I like that. I said, have and access to or have acquired access to access to this would be their ongoing i read that as their ongoing investment by the school district in their in staff training and yep. so not that they come already pre-trained with everything right okay right so are we yes david i was just going to say this feels like it's related to letter c if we if we want to have less overall belief statements it could be combined i'm not saying we should delete anything but it was just just a thought okay so c was uh environment that fosters physical and emotional health access to learning and working environment okay maybe it is two separate things i don't know yeah will these all be categorized at the end Meaning that they might like the ones that I don't know. Link to staff, for example, might be put together or. Oh, I yeah, I just didn't know if that was the if it would take that structure um, when it's all done, but. I, I'm happy to do it. Well, then we'll need to create categories. Um, <laughs> no, well, no, I, I was just going to put them kind of side by side. Yeah. So do we want to vote on keeping H as is? As it is now. All right. Thumbs up if you support H as it's written. Thirteen. Great. Okay, good. Now was it F that you wanted to uh, David White, do you want to advocate moving F up to number one? Yes. Okay. Others feel the same. Okay. Any other mergers and acquisitions here? All right, this is very good work. This is tough. This is tough work. <laughs> you, you all did this really well. Um, all right. We are moving on to the last piece. This one, uh, we're not going to be doing a lot of wordsmithing. I just want to uh, give you an idea of kind of how this may go. Uh, I'm identifying some roles here with board's role in red superintendent's role in green and others role in black so that we're being specific here uh, from the one i sent out to you in my conversation with lane uh, we deleted the one-to-one -one computers because i'm hearing that you already have that uh, so this one and again it's the the mechanics of this you've got a list of goals whoops You've got action steps, sometimes more than one, that relate to a given goal. You've got a measurement or a metric. You've got a timeline. And then you've got who's responsible for either monitoring progress or actually making it happen. Uh, so the board's role uh, in this one uh, would be to update board ends and executive limitations policies to be able to address this goal about learning resources and materials that would be the board's strategic role the superintendent's operational role would be to implement administrative procedures that address each of these issues and one of the conversation the conversation i had with lane today uh, and that work is already underway here to continue vertical and horizontal uh, curriculum articulation I probably am going to change that to make that a, a bit more user friendly so it's not education jargon. But what that really means is making sure there's a scope and sequence, make sure there's a continuum 
from grade level to grade level. Uh, and uh, so that's really a curriculum focus. In that same vein, under uh, school culture and climate, closing gaps for academic learning, the action step would be to continue to disaggregate uh, to disaggregate data for social emotional learning, racial justice, poverty. There may be some others. And the metric would be the line staff professional development programs to meet the goal. And this would be a superintendent's operational level. Uh, continue the district wide equity plan development. And again, that's a professional development component. We heard quite a bit in the forums and the survey around school culture and climate. So the action step might be to conduct student, teacher, parent voice and aspiration survey. And a suggestion. Winton. Yeah. As I looked over the data um, and other people who are here, they can, can correct me. Um, I guess my concern is that we've lost a little bit of like the flavor of the equity work. It says continue district-wide equity plan, um, <clears throat> but it no longer references, um, like I think when I was at the student forums anyway, I was hearing about work with equity that, that students were doing, not necessarily like all students, but I think that students having access to that kind of work. So we have a student on here, I don't know. Um, it just feels like that has shifted a little bit in the drafts. Oh, learning racial justice poverty, that's there, but it's still very adult focused, I think. Um, so I don't know what other people are thinking. But that's just something that it feels like as we've gone through the drafts has shifted. Okay. Wilder, do you want to weigh in on this? Sorry to put you on the spot. I'm sorry, can you repeat what it? So it felt like in some of the feedback we were getting, or the feedback we were getting, there was a focus on equity and developing, you know, continued work on equity. And then when we got into this document, um, it was focused on more like professional development for staff around equity. And I felt like I was hearing from the student voices that there was a need for continued work among students on equity. Um, yeah. So that's where I just wanted to make sure that we didn't pull a whole bunch of students, get some data, and then craft goals that didn't honor the feedback that they gave us. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Beautiful. Um, what does what does disaggregate data mean? It mean okay. That good point. That what that means is looking at uh, a pile of data and disaggregating for poverty, disaggregating for. Um, racism, disaggregating for ethnicity. In other words, looking at particular cohorts of students and analyzing um, how they're, what kind of success they're having. And, and it goes back here to closing gaps for academic learning. If we look at uh, students who live in poverty, uh, um, disadvantaged, financial disadvantaged, Households, the student data, many times there are big lags between uh, students that um, do really well, might be in affluent families, and students who live in poverty don't do well. And the sign of a effective school district is all students are making academic gains because we're paying attention to all of the the different uh, disaggregated data sorts. So that's a long-winded answer, uh, but that's that's what that means. Okay, thank you. And it's, it's part of an overall strategy because it seems like there's curriculum content above this and training below this. So it's really 
three or four different things going at to trying to improve the diversity situation at the school. Am I reading that, reading the overall plan correctly? Yeah. Okay. On the one right above it, can we add gender? Ah, uh -huh. right here? Uh, further up, so if you scroll up. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. In the curriculum, no, even further up in the curriculum, it just felt like. Yeah, in that listing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and th this is another uh, cohort that would be disaggregated. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for catching that. Yeah. And thanks for asking that question, David. So, Winton, curriculum wise, the state is also requiring that all schools adopt an equity curriculum in sort of the social studies um, curriculum itself. Am, is that not correct, Lisa? Yeah, so they're, they have a work group happening right now and they're developing those standards. Um, I always get bogged down in exactly what they're called. Um, but well, you're right. they're working on developing it. Um, we have members of our school community who are involved with those efforts. Um, so it's one of those things that is in progress. Um, so we're moving in that direction. And so far through our um, Emily Sarian's um, Roland Fellowship, where she's focusing on democratic engagement standards and, and the work that's happening through the Racial Justice PBL, um, I think we're in a good place in relationship to those. Um, but that is definitely work that the state is, is engaging in. Say that what what is what's your role in fellow uh, measure racial justice standards? Um, the they're actually called democratic engagement standards. They come um, from teaching tolerance initially, which has now changed their name to Te learning for justice. Um, but she's done a lot of work with them, and they encompass a lot of history and civics. Um, they, they are aimed at um, getting people more engaged and involved and amplifying um, marginalized voices. Okay. So. Uh, what I added here, I think the state's focus is equity, inclusion, and racial justice uh, curriculum, but it, that may not be exactly right. But I know. Um, the other district I'm working with right now has a uh, has a, a committee that is working directly with the state on these three areas, and they're developing a policy, a school-wide policy around that. So not only embedding in the curriculum, but uh, uh, making adaptations to their their uh, their current policy. Yeah, and they're and social equity standards. I'm sorry, I had to Google them again. Say that again, measure what? Social equity? They are social, um, ethnic and social equity standards. So ethnic and social equity standards are the, is the state title. You said you left the engagement in. Did I get that right, Lisa? All the programs to meet will survey students on their view of equity, measure social and ethnic engagement standards. Yeah, okay. Okay. This is good feedback, folks. Let me just share with you. Um, I've worked with this person that originated uh, Russ Qualia from the Qualia Institute. Used to be out of University of Maine at Orono. It's now, I think, out of Endicott College. But not only do they have surveys on student voice, they also have teacher voice and parent voice. Um, so I've shared that with Lane. That may or may not work for you. I know that Lane said he has a uh, self-developed uh, 
student voice survey. Uh, so either way, making sure that we are we are paying attention to uh, student voice is critically important in this process. And so that's just that's one of the four, and it's probably all we have time for tonight because I've got to turn this around and get it ready for the board meeting in about 15 minutes. So uh, what I think I'm going to do is ask you to take a look at these others and uh, make side edits. You see up here in the edit mode, just to make a suggestion. Uh, I prefer not to make an edit for now, just make a suggestion. And I will consider all those suggestions and continue to develop here. Because my knowledge is limited only from what I've heard in surveys and in the feedback forums. Same with foundational knowledge and the same with personal development. And so if you do that over the next, we actually, you got a week off for good behavior. You've been doing such good work that we're not going to meet next week. And I know you're going to be sad, uh, but you'll be able to get over it. Uh, so in the next agenda, if you would go through and make those side suggestions in the goal matrix, and also uh, as soon as I can get the tech department to give you the same survey observation that I shared with you, uh, go through and give me, it'd be great to have 10 observations, but if you can only do five, so be it. Send those to me. Uh, we'll talk about that in the in the next agenda on the again on the 26th of April. And also what I talked to Lane about all schools in the state, and you've heard me say this before, uh, are developing the COVID recovery plan and submitting that to the state. Uh, Lane's continuing to feed me uh, kind of the development as he works that through with the administrative cabinet. It may take a, a another meeting uh, in May for us to make those alignments, but I want to make sure that when the strategic plan uh, goes to the board, I think on May 10th, that we also have that aligned with the COVID recovery plan. If the COVID recovery plan takes more time, then we may have to push that uh, to the June meeting. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is, I need a little bit of flexibility depending on how the evolution of both of those uh, emerge. And with that, I'll just uh, I'll stop talking and see if you have anything else to share tonight, any questions, any feedback, any thoughts or issues before we wrap up. And I'd also encourage you to um, sit in on the, on the board meeting tonight at 6.30. Any, any other thoughts or issues? for the good of the committee and the betterment of the world. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we're good to go. All right, yeah, thanks a lot, I, gang. Good work tonight. <laughs>